back when I was first learning how to code, uh, I always got thrown off by the error messages. It's like they would, when I was writing Ruby, they would come back in, in red text with this dark background. It's very ominous and scary. And I wasn't always able to find help. And so ultimately, that's why I stopped trying to teach myself to code until I went and spent a lot of money having other people teach me how to code. Um, now we've got tools like ChatGPT, which could potentially help mitigate that uh, at no cost, at least for now. So let's imagine that it's I've never coded before and I'm interested in, in learning how to code anything. Well, most of you probably already know this if you've done any type of coding, but if you're brand new to coding and you're in your browser, then you can open up the developer console. So if you're in Edge or Chrome or anything similar, Control shift j on a uh, Windows machine, or maybe it's Command-Alt-J or something on uh, Mac, will open up this window right here and it has the console selected if it's selected something else just click on console and then here you can write code and then it will give you output there's one of those scary errors I was talking about so let's do two things let's have it write some code that we can paste in here and, and see if it works and then let's have it explain to us what the code does so we will ask it to write a simple uh, function so write some well, javascript will be the language that we'll use just because that's the language that this window will understand since it's being ran in the browser so we'll say write some javascript code that takes a sentence and returns it in all caps and instead of using the word return we'll just say uh logs it in all caps all right so here's some javascript code that takes a sentence and logs it in all caps gives you an example and uh, <laughs> I didn't even have to ask it to explain it to me right it's actually starting to do that right now so uh, here's the code let's just assume that we've never coded before so looking at it may not necessarily make sense it tells you here the two uppercase method is a built-in method of the string object in JavaScript so still like what the heck is a string what is an object uh, it says, which converts all the characters in a string to uppercase. Okay, well, we can at least understand that two uppercase uh, is making these characters uppercase. Still not really sure what a string is or what it does. In the example above, we pass a string as an argument to the login caps function and then use the two uppercase method to convert it to uppercase before logging it to the console. So that may seem super simple and obvious to anybody that's coded before but if you've never coded at all or you're just getting into it then words like argument and function method uppercase or <laughs> you should know what uppercase is logging and console are all not necessarily going to make any sense to you so <clears throat> the cool thing is is we can copy this code there's a button for copying it you could also just click that go down here to your console this is the console right and paste it in and then if you press enter or return there it is it took the input here hello world and it outputted it in all caps so that's our first program pretty cool now we don't fully understand it yet right we're just like just kind of looking at this and still not like what the heck is that purple function uh keyword there and and what is what so what what i would do next if i was a self-taught developer at this point is I would start digging deeper so uh, the first thing I want to know is explain what a function is in JavaScript so a function is a block of code that can be defined and then executed whenever it is called functions are an essential part of the JavaScript language they provide a way to group and reuse code Functions have the following structure, so then it gives you some syntax. Function keyword is used to declare a function followed by the function's name, which is a series of letters, digits, or underscores, and must not begin with the digit. So it's explaining some of the rules for creating a function. The function's name is followed by a set of parentheses, which may contain zero or more parameters. Okay, so we don't really know what a parameter is yet. These are the values that are passed to the function when it is called. So there in the next sentence, it explained what a parameter was. The code to be executed is contained within the curly braces. So here's an example of a simple function that adds two numbers. So taking this information and maybe reading through it a couple times, 
we can denote that like this is how you define the function these are the parameters right and the code inside the curly bracket is what gets executed whenever you call the function so then down here we're calling the function here and passing it arguments so we still don't know all that information right we don't know what an argument is uh, we may not have connected the dots on like how to call a function and then here we've got some code that doesn't make any sense this let result equal to uh, so let's continue and see if it explains that so in this example the add function takes two parameters x and y and returns their sum okay that makes perfect sense the function is called with the arguments three and four so here we can see whether it's the three and the four but we still may think like is this part of it being called what is that so let's continue and the result is assigned to the result variable okay functions can be called multiple times with different arguments which allows you to reuse the same code multiple times with different input values so you might have to read that a couple times but hopefully after a few times of analyzing it, you realize okay so the purpose of functions is that they take input they give output but they're reusable we can use them over and over again with varying inputs and so that's what makes them so powerful now there was some stuff here like this assigning it to a result variable explain what a variable is in JavaScript <clears throat> So a variable is a storage location for a value. Variables are used to store data values in a program and they can be referred to by name in the code. To declare a variable in JavaScript, you can use var let or const keyword followed by the variable name. For example, var x let y const c. So here we've declared and that's it. So the var keyword is used to declare a variable that is either global or local to the function in which it is defined. So that's kind of a mouthful. I could definitely see getting confused having read that. The let keyword is used to declare a block scoped variable. Doesn't make any sense if you're brand new to coding. So which means that the variable is only accessible within the block in which it is defined. So at this point, you're probably might be wondering, well, what is a block? The const keyword is used to declare a constant, which is a variable that cannot be reassigned a different value. That makes perfect sense. So after, a de after declaring a variable, you can assign a value to it using the assignment operator equals, for example. So here uh, we can kind of infer that this equal sign is what is called an operator or an assignment operator in this case. So here we have var x, we remember from earlier when they explained to us that that is how you declare a variable named x using the var keyword. And then here they're assigning the variable to a value. We don't know anything about integers or numbers or strings or anything like that yet, so we just see that a value is being stored in this variable named x. Then they show you two more examples using let and const. And then it explains, in this example, x is declared as a variable and then assigned to the value 10. y is declared as a variable and assigned the value 20 in the same statement. So you could look up, explain a statement, and you would find out you know, what they mean by a statement. But here we can kind of infer that if it's all on one line, it's, it's considered a statement. Uh, which isn't necessarily true, but that's what we could kind of determine at this point. Uh, okay, so z is declared as a constant and assigned the value 30. Va variables are used to store and manipulate data in a JavaScript program. They provide a way to access and modify values in your code, and they're an important part of JavaScript language. So they provide a way to access and modify values in your code. So we're, we're making some baby steps here. Um, if we go back to the beginning here with this function, at the very, very beginning, the login caps, uh, we still may be curious about like what an argument is and what a string is and then we have some more questions so at this point you definitely want to be taking notes right because it's just a lot of stuff to take in but as you're taking the notes you say this is how you create a function oh this is what a variable is this is how you declare a variable this is how you assign a variable uh, these are the different keywords you can use in their purposes uh, but there's a lot of different things we need to ask and keep track of because every time we ask something new then it presents us with other stuff that we're like oh we didn't know about that what is that and so we just keep 
branching off on this never-ending tree. So at this point, you know, we want to know what a string is. We want to know what an argument is, uh, potentially what a parameter is, if we haven't already figured that out. And uh, we kind of know what it means to assign. We want to know what a statement is in JavaScript. We want to know what it means to be block scoped, so or what a block is. So we can say explain what a block is in JavaScript. <clears throat> so here's that word statements again. So we just kind of need to go back and figure out what statements are. But it says in JavaScript, a block is a group of statements that are enclosed in curly braces. Okay. Blocks are used to group statements together and to define the scope of variables. Okay, there's that scope thing that we talked about earlier. So here's an example of a block in JavaScript. So here's the curly brackets that it told us about. Everything inside of it that's enclosed inside of it is uh, going to be these different statements, but this is the block, right? So blocks are often used in conjunction with control statements such as if, for, and, and or while. So boom, that's just like another can of worms of things that we need to figure out. What, what the heck is a control, control statement? Uh, to define the code that should be executed when a particular condition is met. So it's going to give us an example right out of the gate. That's nice. If, and then here's these parentheses. So that's, uh, we saw that with the function earlier. Does that mean that this is a function? Uh, so there's some questions there. It said that it's a control statement, so we might want to look more into that. But here we have uh, this thing x, and we're not sure what that is exactly. We, it looks kind of like the x from earlier, so is that a variable? Possibly. So x, and then uh, this looks kind of like math from algebra, so x greater than 0. But here's those parentheses, or the curly brackets rather. And so we, we can infer that what's inside of them is, is the block, right? This is the block, and what's inside of it is going to be a statement. So there's this thing here. It says console.log. There's some parentheses, some quotations. X is greater than 0. Let's, let's read what it says. So in this example, the block of code console.log x is greater than 0 is executed only if the condition x and then that greater than sign 0 is true. So we might want to find out about conditions. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff may seem really obvious, especially if you've done any type of coding in any capacity before. But you got to put yourself in the mindset of a beginner. If you are a beginner, then obviously it's not that difficult to put yourself in that mindset. So you just can't take any of this stuff for granted. There's a lot of stuff to take in, but the point of this whole thing is that as long as you're taking notes and you're asking the right questions, then ChatGPT is a fantastic tool for learning this stuff. Granted, this is like a totally from scratch. I just started, I just wanted to go from knowing nothing about coding to writing my first program. And I'm talking about a very simple program. But if you've ever, uh, if you put yourself back when you first started coding, if you're first starting to code now, then you know that writing a program that gives you output is just a super rewarding thing, no matter how simple it is. So this is a very powerful tool for you to be able to make notes, get questions to, or get answers to questions that you might have to wait a day or two on Stack Overflow. Or you might have to pay somebody to answer for you. Uh, this can get you pointed in the right direction. Of course, you can also always learn from the documentation or from tutorials. So this doesn't have to be your only learning resource. It's just a nice uh, tool. Granted, there are potential misinformations from this tool. So you always have to take everything with a grain of salt and kind of double check it. If you write some notes, you might want to go look it up and, and cross-reference it with like the documentation for JavaScript over at MDN or a different tutorial where they also introduce you to whatever that topic is, variables or functions. Uh, I want to say that a lot of this simpler stuff with ChatGPT is pretty spot on in terms of coding. Uh, it doesn't get everything right with all the different questions that you ask it about other topics but with coding especially the simpler programs and especially with coding education just learning the fundamentals it, it's got this stuff down pat uh, as far as I've seen asking it to code more complex pr uh, programs is a little trickier it needs a lot of good information from you and then it needs you to be able to look at it and decipher kind of the mistakes that it may have made and help it fix itself whereas with things like this um, Everything that I've read so far is, is good information. 
So, yeah, if it was me, this is how, if I was going back to learn to code for the first time, I would find free resources online. Documentation is great. Learning how to read documentation is great, and I've talked about that in, in another video. Uh, it can be a little scary at first. The syntax of the documentation can be a little technical and not necessarily approachable by uh, someone brand new to the industry. But if you can get over that hump, the sooner you do, the more powerful you be, you'll become because learning to read documentation is like a superpower when it comes to coding. If you can read documentation and then you have a resource like this to be able to, to go back and forth and ask questions about that thing that you're learning, unless it's cutting edge, because like right now you wouldn't be able to learn anything about brand new stuff. This is all back to a year ago uh, is the information that it's able to, to give you uh, responses on. But... If, you know, if you're trying to learn React, yeah, are there changes between the current version of React, 18, I think, and then what was out last year, 17? I'm sure there's there's some stuff, but you can always go look up migration guides and change logs and YouTube videos and documentation, but the fundamentals are, are still there. So if you want to learn like what components are and state and props and all these different concepts with React or Angular or Vue or any of these other popular front-end frameworks, uh, then a tandem using the documentation and asking questions and getting help from this essentially free personal assistant, at least for now, I think is just the optimum way to learn on your own uh, without having to rely on anyone else. Now, eventually you will want to network and uh, find mentors and other people that you can code with because it's kind of lonely just talking to a computer all the time. But um, this is just a great way to speed up your productivity when learning to code. So hopefully you can take advantage of this. And um, I know if you, you look on YouTube, everybody's just like, how can I monetize chat GPT or how you can make money? And just whatever, people are freaking out about it. And that's great. That's what everybody does about everything, NFTs and crypto. And it's, it's just everybody on the internet trying to make money. But slow down, take a step back. If you're trying to learn how to code, it's a great resource in my opinion. Um, here we are with our first program. And now that you know a little bit about functions and strings and whatever else uh, we researched just now, you could write your second program and your third program and you could start basically snowballing and uh, progressing through your personal coding education. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please give it a like and uh, share it if you like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks a lot and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.